Sound Toolkit is a state-of-the-art audio engine that uses hybrid beam ray tracing methods to simulate in a virtual world how sound behaves in real life by recreating acoustical phenomena such as reflection of a sound wave, diffraction, attenuation, scattering, transmission, reverberation of a room and so on. In this video I'd like to demonstrate how to use features of Sound Toolkit Unity plugin in order to create an immersive audio experience in a simple game. In order to do that, we'll start a blank project in Unity to have a clean slate. First, let's import the Sound Toolkit package. After the import, we can see that an additional menu tab appeared in the tools slash sound toolkit. Now let's import the pre-made assets package we will use to create our game. The game mechanics are simple. The player has to find his lost cubes. They will spawn randomly on the map and the goal is to approach them and touch them in order to pick them up. There is a problem though. The cubes are covered with a cloaking field and so they are invisible unless the player can get really close to them. The cloak gives off a quiet buzz though, audible only near the cube. However, player can call the cube by pressing the E key, which will cause it to respond. This can be heard at much longer distances, albeit not always. Using the sound to navigate, player has to find 10 missing cubes, and each found cube will be marked on the central pillar, which serves the purpose of the score counter. Our game is now imported with its basic mechanics, such as cube invisibility already in place, but it does not have any sound in it yet, so let's integrate it with Sound Toolkit now. The first step will be adding a Sound Toolkit listener component to your camera, or wherever you want the audio listener to be placed. After having done this, we need to set up the acoustic scene, geometrically simplified representation of an in-game world. Since our map is mostly made of simple planes, we can just add them to the acoustic scene as is. In order to do that, just add the Sound Toolkit Mesh component to all existing meshes you want to be processed by Audio Engine. With multi-edit this is very fast and efficient. Notice how we omitted the central pillar in the main room? This is because its geometry is more complicated, far more than is necessary for sound simulation. Acoustic scenes should be made of simple shapes with low triangle count approximating the actual visual scene. Because of that, we will approximate a shape by creating an invisible, non-collatable mesh and adding the Sun Toolkit mesh component to it instead of the central pillar itself. The rule of thumb with acoustic scene is that the less detailed representation of an object in the acoustic scene, the better, as long as general shape is preserved. We could, for example, use lowest level of detail proxies of an in-game meshes as an acoustic scene if we had those. Otherwise, it's advised to model in-game objects such as furniture or walls that are complicated with simpler shapes with a low triangle count to get the best performance. Another thing we need to do in order to set up the scene is choosing the acoustic materials for our meshes. Acoustic materials represent how a sound wave approximation will interact with a given mesh on contact, how it will reflect, how it will transmit, what will be the reverberation of the room and so on. It is quite obvious that the room made of stone will sound differently than the room made of, say, cotton candy. Starting with the main room, we select all of its meshes and in the acoustic material field we pick a material that we want the room to be made of, acoustically of course, for example a clinker concrete. Let's do that for all the rooms. Now another room we will choose a different material, in this case uh, let's choose for example ceramic tiles on dense concrete, then go on to another room as this corridor here. We will choose a different material for walls and ceiling and a different material for the floor. In that case, we will choose uh, walls and ceiling made of, uh, let's say, painted and glazed brick. And the floor will be covered in some sort of carpet on concrete. Now let's jump to a different room the huge one here. The room will be very reverberant on its own because of its size and we will further increase the reverberation by making it, by making it made of concrete, which reflects sound very well. And the last room here, 
Let's make it made of um, plywood, paneling on concrete. For our central pillar, we will select only the acoustic mesh we created. Let's rename it real quick and let's choose a marble. Now, as we have our meshes and materials all set up, we can begin placing sound sources in our scene. First, let's address the player controller component. We want the player to be able to call the cube when pressing the E key. To do that, let's add a spatial sound source component to the player. It has several properties, but the most important one is the playback list. Each playback consists of sound toolkit sample, being the representation of an audio clip, and two controls, looped and play on awake. Let's fill the list with proper samples, four versions of player calling hello. Now let's tackle the code that uses the sound source we've just added. In an empty player controller script, we first add the using directive for sound toolkit unity. Now let's define our sound source as a member of player controller. In the start method, we will use get component to assign our sound source to that member. Then we want an actual method that plays the sound. We will call it call cube. After checking if the playbacks are not null, we will use one of the sound source's play methods. In that case, play random. At last, in the update we will check if the player pressed the E key and use the call cube method if he did. That is the entirety of our player controller code. Let's see real quick how it works. Hello! Hello! Another element we want to edit is our cube prefab. Let's add the spatial sound source component to it. This source will emit the sound of a cloaking field at a close distance. We want it to be emitted at all times, so we will enable the looped and play on awake controls. Now let's decrease the volume a bit and change the attenuation to linear. This will allow us to control the max distance at which the source is audible. Let's make it uh, 16 meters. Now we will add source spawner component responsible for emitting the sound of a cube being found by the player. Let's leave its parameters default and jump straight ahead to the cube controller code. The script already contains some logic responsible for visual aspects of our cube, but has no logic related to sound yet. In that script, we want to show how to create a sound source from code. We will use it to play the responses of the cube when the player calls it, also triggered by pressing the E key. First, let's add some public fields to ensure control over sound from editor. Namely, the delay after which the cube responds, and fields of the sound source we will be creating from code. Now, let's add private fields representing the components of our cube the spatial source and source spawner we added earlier, and the newly created source. On awake, we will assign our components to the fields using the getComponent method, and also we will create our new sound source with initializeResponseSource method. Let's define it now. As you can see, the method is simple. It creates a new spatial sound source component and then assigns values of our cube controller public fields, such as volume and attenuation, to the corresponding source properties. Next, we will add a method that actually plays the sound on a newly created source. We will call it respondAfter, and no surprises here, it waits for a given amount of time and then plays a random sound from our newly created sound source. As it was with player controller, on each update we will check if the E key was pressed, and if it was, call the respondAfter method with response delay we defined earlier as a parameter. Last thing we need to do here is triggering sound when the player picks up the cube. To do that, we will change what happens in collision. Instead of simply destroying the cube, we will now stop the cloaking field sound and then use our spawner to create a pickup sound, destroying the cube only after it was played. Let's jump back to editor to see our newly created script. 
As we can see, we have all of our public fields here. Let's tweak their values a little bit, making it louder and assign proper cube response playbacks. One last thing we can do is adding an ambient sound source to our scene. Ambient sound sources play their samples without the impact of geometry, so they are perfect for, for example, music. Let's assign a music playback, with its looped and play on wake properties on. We want it a bit quieter though, logarithmic volume scale can help us with that. Now that everything is set up properly, we can enjoy our newly created game with superb sound. Hello! This demo does not cover all of the capabilities of Sound Toolkit, only the basics needed to create a very simple game such as this, so feel free to check our documentation for more information. We are available on Unity Store for everyone wanting an immersive out-of-the-box 3D audio in their games. Thank you, and have a good one. Hello.